Fawn, the origins of a great band. Fawn started from another band called Deep Fork. And Mick and I were in together. We must have been real hungry when we made that name up. Added mm. Jim Williams. Bill Natale, our drummer, came up with the idea to use an acronym, which was the first initials of our last names. So it was Favis, Anderson, Williams, and Natale. We started out with the idea of being a vocal band, and it stayed with us right to the end. Harmony got us through in the early years when they were fighting against a lot of horn bands and all the clubs we were playing, we used our harmony instead of the brass. We struggled and we played six and seven sets a night. It was like a factory job. But what those factory job nights gave us was the opportunity to hone our craft and really get tight. We got booked in a gig in Champaign, Illinois at the University of Illinois. That same night, an agent came up a gentleman by the name of Paul Hertzberg, who now is the CEO of Cinetel Films in Hollywood. And he managed us and got us booked all over uh, the university circuit. We added Rich Hasdra on drums later on. Those four guys right there really toured and we became real popular. Rich coming into the band gave us another voice and our vocals improved dramatically after that and that band got very very popular very quickly and we were touring like crazy and still working six and seven nights a week but playing in uh, clubs and venues that appreciated what we were doing so it was a big step forward and that takes us to the point where we got booked in the uh, Wisconsin Dells in 1971 Bill them and they will come the energy flowing through that room was just incredible. A lot of sweat, a lot of music, a lot of laughing, a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of good fun. It was, it was phenomenal. It was a different time. It was a different place. It was a crazy world. People came to have a good time, and that's what we gave them. There were two young guys who played at another club in town, and that was a guy named Brian and a guy named Robin Zander. I know he got in one time because he brought in a vintage Les Paul to hand to Meg, and so they let him in because they thought he was supposed to be let in for that. But he would sit out there. And he would listen to us because he loved not just the music again, he loved the music, but he loved our vocals, he loved our harmony. Acoustics were passed around and the blend we got with the rest of us put together, when you put us four together with Robin Zander, it was just incredible. After our experience in the Dells, we got booked in some better clubs in the Chicago area, and for the first time in Chicago, we were received as professionals. And all of a sudden, the clubs that were shutting us out were embracing us. The word was getting around that the band was really happening. The third phase of Fawn included adding Rick Young on bass and Robin Zander on vocals. We had Harmony, which Everyone in the band at that time realized we had something very, very special going on, and we were already really popular. And that's a very, very liberating feeling when you know you've got something great. Rick Young had an awesome voice and played bass like a guitar player. He'd bend the notes and everything. We're going, what's this? Greg Olick, one of the fine, jazzy-style drummer. We'd never had anything like that before, and he was exceptional at that. And we were starting to change our style a little bit, and the previous incarnation of the band was very, very popular, so there were some really big shoes to fill. Final 
reincarnation of Bond saw the entrance of Steve Jones, it was time to make a change, and Steve was right there, and he knew all our material, so within about a week, we were back out on the road, and we really didn't miss our stride at all. I mean, we were able to get right back and, and start playing again, and we recorded some of our best stuff. I could not get him off the spot. He was rock solid, holding the speed. Great fellow. We really sounded great with him on drums. And that took us all the way to like 1980. Mick and I were together through all of that. And it was a journey that started, and you don't know where it's going, so you just get on this ride, and you ride it. And see where it ends up. And uh, I had a ball. Wouldn't miss it for the world. One of the things that I think is a blessing from the whole experience of starting with Fawn and actually being very, very successful is just that. It enabled me as a creative person to really have a keen perspective of when it's working and when it's not. gigs for a couple years and you get tired of it and you let us take the car when you finally got of age. JY. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> well, just please, please do. It's your house. Well, it's well, your... How early are you going to start this? And how then, late are you going to take it? Later on. I don't know. He's got the red light on. It <laughs> means I have to keep I going. Kind of time. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a TV person. See, I know when that red light's on, I have to keep talking or it's dead air. And that's not allowed. That's not allowed. You know, these these guys here, I've been playing with them a lot, a long time, you know. <laughs> you know what, though? We, we got one line that doesn't mean anything. Your garden. Awesome. 